I'm Martin Tyler, and you're listening to Harry Simeon. Hello and welcome to the Chronicles of Aguna Extra, your bite-sized piece of content in which we focus on one particular subject. And the subject of today's show is the interview, the exclusive interview that Eddie and Ketia gave to the Beautiful Game podcast. Fantastic work from the guys over there. Again, I'll leave the link in the description, so do check it out if you haven't done so already. But I just wanted to do a little bit of a reaction to what Eddie and Ketty has had to say, uh, to him expressing his frustrations at a lack of game time, to him confirming what the situation is with regards to his contract at Arsenal and what the future is likely to hold for him. I thought it was a really, really interesting piece. And actually, I think it's the first time that I've heard Eddie and Ketia speak for a sort of long period of time. I think the interviews are around about an hour long, but it was quite nice actually to sort of sit back and get a bit of an insight into Eddie and Ketia, the man, because for me, he's always been a peripheral figure at Arsenal, somebody that we hoped would come through one day and be good enough to hold down a place in the team. I think it's been apparent for some time now that maybe he's not quite at that level. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. And obviously, I, I, I wish that wasn't the case. I'd have loved to see him sort of push on, develop and really sort of make a claim for that number nine position at Emirates Stadium. But just based on what I've seen, if I'm being honest, I'm not sure that he's quite at that level. Um, does he give us something a little bit different to Lacazette when he's on the pitch? I think he gives us a little bit more mobility, a little bit more pace and more of a threat in behind. But ultimately, Eddie Nketiah to me is someone who comes alive sort of inside the penalty area, doesn't give you an awful lot outside of that other than hard work. He is a hard worker. Nobody can take that away from him. Nobody can deny that. But he's just not, in my opinion, in terms of his game, sophisticated enough to be the guy that we build around, to be the guy that we move forward. Now, he confirmed during this interview that contract offers have been made. We already knew that, that the club have put something on the table in front of him. We know that there's been interest from other clubs. But this was a really, really fascinating insight into Eddie and Ketir. And I made a couple of notes on bits and pieces from that interview that I wanted to discuss. Now, I'm not going to read off quotes from Eddie and Ketir. Uh, this is a reaction to the interview. But if you want to check out the interview first, hit the pause button, click on the link in the description and check it out. Also, while you're here, make sure you smash a like on the video and make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Um, there was one story he told in particular that for me was a bit of an eye opener because I had no idea um, that this deal actually came as close as it did. Now, Eddie and Ketty had talked about almost leaving the club during Unai Emery's tenure. Now, as I say, I had an idea that he was tempted by a loan move to Germany, to the Bundesliga, to Augsburg specifically. But I didn't know that it got this close. And Eddie tells the story about how the plug was essentially pulled on this deal right at the last minute. He talked about the fact that it was all in place, that he, his family and his representatives had made the trip over to Germany, that they'd already made up the shirt. And Ketia, number nine. And Augsburg at the time were a mid-table Bundesliga club. And Eddie talked about how appealing that was, you know, the opportunity to go and play in one of Europe's top leagues, to play regularly. Um, and at a club that weren't battling for, for survival, they were mid-table, they were of a decent standard. And he felt like this would be a really good uh, opportunity to go and sort of develop his trade a little bit more. I always think as well, when you're talking about loan moves, we, we talk quite a bit nowadays more so than previously about the idea of going abroad. Initially, people used to say, well, you should stay in England because that's the type of football that you're going to be playing. And often we saw players move to lower league clubs or Premier League clubs who were sort of towards the bottom end of the table. I still think that you don't quite get the Premier League experience unless you stay within it. But I think as far as the leagues abroad go, probably the closest stylistically to the Premier League would have to be the Bundesliga. So this would have made sense, um, in my opinion. But as I say, he talks about how all of that was sort of spoken about. He'd gone over to Germany, was about to sign on the dotted line. Um, he'd got a phone call from a number that he didn't recognise a little bit earlier and just chose to ignore it and went through the medical. His agent then got a call from Hus Farmi, who at the time at Arsenal Football Club was very much uh, in control of sort of transfers and doing the deals, who said, listen, 
Unai Emery wants to talk to you again. And Eddie Nketiah speaks about how he was a little bit baffled and a little bit surprised by this, given that he and Unai Emery had already spoken and that Unai Emery had already given him his blessings. Um, and he then said that he was told uh, that we were too short up front. And um, and the deal ultimately um, was terminated, was aborted. And he talked about how difficult it was to kind of bounce back from that because you think you're going somewhere, you shift your mindset towards that, and then to have the rug pulled from under your feet must be quite difficult. I think that's something that would be quite hard to reset after, particularly when you look at how little football he played at Arsenal in that season as well, sort of even post the uh, the deal sort of collapsing. So it kind of made me sort of a little bit sympathetic to Eddie and Ketia's current situation. Now, I was quite critical of him earlier on in the season when it was reported that he decided he didn't want to go to Crystal Palace. I was quite critical of the fact that, you know, kind of who does this guy think he is? Like he isn't uh, somebody who's been firing at the highest level. And therefore, I don't think he's got the sort of the clout to say no to a Crystal Palace. And I also couldn't understand why he seems quite desperate to get out of Arsenal. But when you hear things like this, it kind of makes you realise that actually it's not always uh, rosy for the player. And, and perhaps he's had one sort of struggle too many at Arsenal Football Club in order to, or in his battle to try and get game time. And so it made a little bit more sense to me. And as I say, I came away from watching that interview a little bit more sympathetic and empathetic towards Eddie and Ketia's situation. He also spoke about the spell at Leeds. Um, he said he learned a lot. He said he underestimated how stubborn Bielsa was. And I think he used the term uh, stubborn. He said he started well, but he just couldn't understand why he wasn't get, getting given the opportunities. He did say that Bielsa's training pushed him to his absolute limits. And he started to question his own work rate, having spent so many years at Arsenal prior uh, when he went there and found the training really, really difficult, really, really tough. It's known as murder ball. Um, he sort of dismissed suggestions that Marcelo Bielsa is someone who overtrains his players, uh, but he certainly talked about the level of intensity and the level of physicality required to keep up uh, with those. He was quizzed about the non-negotiables. What are Mikel Arteta's non-negotiables? And whilst he didn't go into detail, he talked about the principle in which the team is expected to go out and play. And he talked about respect, um, whether that be among colleagues, among players, among players in the staff, among the manager and his players, whatever that dynamic might be, whatever that relationship might be. Eddie and Ketia uh, sort of gave us those two little samples of, of what Mikel Arteta's non-negotiables comprise of, although I think we could have probably guessed uh, those two. So he was a, a little bit careful there. He was also careful with the Aubameyang stuff. He kind of danced around the question around the impact that Aubameyang and Ozil specifically his departures had. Um, and he kind of turned it back onto him by saying, well, look, everybody's got their problems. I'm focused on myself. He talked about what good guys they were to him and how they helped him, but of course, didn't want to get roped into that. Um, was also asked about whether or not his his uh, sort of lack of opportunities is in his eyes a tactical thing. And he, he dismissed that as well. He doesn't think that it is anything tactical. Um, and he talked about the offers made to him by the club. He talked about the contract offers that have been made. Obviously, he didn't go into numbers. He didn't go into specifics. Um, and he did confirm that those um, sort of offers were there, but that he wants to reevaluate at the end of the season. And listen, as I say, I, that hearing that Augsburg story and how close it came to actually materialising, I do feel a bit sorry for Eddie Nketiah. And I do think that he's right not to jump into something because he, he spoke about it. He signed a five-year deal when he was 18 and he's had very little game time. I think he said that he's played 31 times from the start in like a three, four five-year period. And that's just not enough, is it? Some people play that in a season. So to 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 have five years or so of being on the peripheries, enough is enough. And I understand why he wants to leave. And I understand why, unless he's going to get guarantees over game time and guarantees about his role in the side, he is open to the idea um, of moving on. He talked about the fact that there was interest in him in January, but that the club had batted away uh, those offers and, and that interest 
of course, because he's under contract, but because Arsenal were, unlike when Unai Emery was in charge, actually short up front this time. Um, he sort of hinted he'll leave, to be honest. Um, you know, he said it's kind of hard to say uh, what the future holds for me right now, but my stance remains the same. I want game time. And, and, and that's what everybody's intention should be. Um, and I thought Eddie kind of put that across really, really well uh, in the interview. He didn't shy away, though, from from this whole sort of topic of, of the frustration and the lack of game time and how he feels that people may be judging a little bit too much on sort of very short cameo appearances that he makes. He says, how can people judge me when I get seven, eight minutes at the end of a game? He said, if I started three, four games in a row and I didn't score, that would be on me. But I'm not being given those opportunities. And uh, obviously, I'm paraphrasing now, but you can understand why he might feel like that. And unfortunately, listen, I don't believe he's at the level that we need. I don't believe he's at the level where he could perform for an Arsenal week in, week out, take on the pressure, take on all that comes with it. So I think the best thing for everyone is that Eddie Nketiah moves on and goes in and, and signs for a club where he is appreciated, where he can push on, where he can play regularly. And only then we'll know what his level actually is. Um, he was asked about the mood in the camp because obviously this interview took place after the last three sort of disappointing results. Sometimes it can be the case with these things that they get stuck in sort of um, in the um, approval phase for a while and then they can be a little bit out of date when they come out. But actually, this one was very, very recent. It came out very, very quickly. And he said that the team are fighting to bounce back and turn this around ASAP. Um, he was asked to kind of sign off with a message to the Arsenal fans where he said, I love the club. I'm a childhood supporter. I'm 100% committed to this season, whether I play 10, 15 minutes at the end of a game, whatever. Uh, but he'll see what the future holds after that. So, as I say, I thought he came across really, really well. Good to hear from the young man at length. You know, we've seen him in interviews from time to time in sort of short post-match bits and here and there. But to actually have an hour-long sort of chat with Eddie and Ketia. Um, and, and listen to it carefully was was actually quite good. Um, and it's certainly, I'm not going to say completely changed my perception of him, but it's altered my perception slightly. Uh, I can now kind of relate a little bit more to what he's been going through and understand those frustrations a little bit better and understand why he doesn't want to stay at Arsenal Football Club, as it seems anyway, and why, you know, he feels probably, although he didn't say it outright, that his future lays elsewhere. The guarantees that he needs at this stage in his career and he ha he is at a stage in his career now where he needs to he needs to blow up he needs to explode onto the scene and be the go-to guy somewhere that won't be arsenal it probably it might not even be a premier league club but he needs to go somewhere where he will be the focal point and he'll be given the opportunity to thrive and develop as i said a player who can come alive inside the penalty area and with the right service there's no reason why he can't score goals elsewhere but he's not the man for Arsenal in my opinion I wish him all the best in whatever he does in the future but it's a really really good interview really really enjoyed it let me know your thoughts on Eddie and Ketia his future um, whether he's good enough to play for the Arsenal what kind of club you think he might end up at and do check out the interview the link is in the description don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new and uh, we'll be back very, very soon with more. Cheers.